theological difference between Krishna and Balaram is that the bodily hue of Krishna is dark and that of Balaram is fair. Krishna is the creator and Balaramji is his creative potency. But they are both worshipped as the supreme primeval lord. Nanda Maharaj therefore asked Gargamuni to perform the ceremony in secret and Gargamuni did so giving the reasons for Balaram's names as follows. So this is Gargamuni speaking. Gargamuni Uvacha. Because Balaram, who is known as Rohini Nanda, the son of Rohini, increases the transcendental bliss of others, his name is Rama. Can we say Rama together? Rama. Rama. Now let's say Rama with real, uh, like feeling ecstasy. Rama. 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 The Titanic is right. Are we going to sink? No, Balaram will save us. Tell you, if Balaram was on the Titanic, it would have sunk. His name is Rama. And because, uh, he was the type. No, 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 no. He the Titanic sunk. <laughs> and because of his extraordinary self, his strength, he is called Baladev. He attracts the Yadus to follow the, his instructions, and therefore his name is Sankarshan. So Sankarshan has many meanings. But no, he attracts. It's attra there's, there's a lot of attraction in Sankarshan. He attracts the Yadus to follow his instructions, and therefore his name is the uh, Sankar. This is a verse directly from the Shima Bhagavatam, 10th canto, chapter 8. I don't know which verse, but I'll just catch it there. This Lord Balaram is none other than the Supreme Personality of God in Himself, Shri Balaram Ki. Yes. He is the second body of the Lord. He is the second body of the Lord. And descends on earth to assist and take care of the Lord in every possible way. He is called a pastime expansion of Krishna. He is the pastime expansion of Krishna. Nilamsha. Nilamsha. Nilamsha means pastime expansion. Balaram represents plowing the land for agriculture. Therefore, he holds the hala and is known as haladhar. Whilst Krishna carries a flute which represents tending the cows. And Krishna is called Mulidhara. Where is he? Mulimana. Is he here? Sri Mulimana Prabhu ki. Beautiful dressing, wonderful pujari, wonderful devotee. Um, <clears throat> Therefore, he carries a fruit. So, Balaram, he is actually representing agriculture, Krishi, and Goraksha is Krishna. So, with that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, where it describes the qualities of the Brahmins, Satyam Shamai Tama, how does it go? Samadama, Samadama, Tapa Solchan, Shanti Rajava, Devacha, Ganam Vigyanam Sa. Itam, Brahma Karma Sobhava Jam. So these are the qualities of the Brahmanas. And similarly, the Krishi Goraksha Varnik Jam. So the Krishi is the agriculture. So our Balaramji is actually the deity of agriculture, of the farmers. So next time you meet a farmer, introduce him to Balaram. Say, I know who you, like for example, we go to school, we, we're joined with Diva. Dira Shanta Prabhu is here. Do you know Dira Shanta Prabhu at the back here? Yeah. Yeah. Dira Shanta Prabhu is uh, one of Prabhupada's very dear disciples. I'm very embarrassed and very um, ashamed to be speaking in front of such a wonderful Vaishnava. He should be here speaking. But somehow or another, by faith, I'm, I've been asked to speak this. But Dira Shanta Prabhu, he uh, is uh, from the southwest of England, but he, he joined in 1971. I think 1971, Prabhu, the Perry Place, or 70, 72. And uh, he, uh, in, later on in the 70s, he went over to uh, the um, 
uh, Scandinavia, and he opened it to Finland and preached in Sweden and Finland with Vega, Vega Van Prabhu, and uh, he opened Finland himself. So he's the founder, founding Acharya in the Krishna Conscious Movement for Finland, on behalf of the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And now dear Shanta Prabhu, he's, he was in Cornwall and preaching at the farm and doing a lot of wonderful preaching and lovely slideshows. I, I think you've seen his slideshows. Fantastic. And uh, and now he's doing the school program and traveling various places uh, and preaching. But he does school preaching. So we also do the same thing. So when we're in the school, what happens is we tell the teachers, when we come to explaining different personalities and deities, we say, now, we're going to tell you all who is the deity of the teachers. Because the teachers have a, have a special deity in, in, in the Hinduism or in Sanatana Dharma. And then we introduce them to Stodha Saraswati. And then the teachers are very impressed. Oh, oh so this, is, uh, this is the uh, deity of the teachers. Oh, and the children are looking, oh, this is the... All right, so I understand. This is how we do Saraswati Puja. Now we show them, I won't go into details, but we introduce like this. So Balaram now, we know he's the deity of agriculture. So this is a great opportunity to, if you meet farmers, people involved in agriculture, you can say, well, you know, in, in Krishna consciousness, we have a spe special deity for you guys. You know, do you want to know who he is? If you say, pray to him, he'll help you out. He may help you out. So th this is the way to interact with people. We can somehow find something and connect with them, somehow. Okay, so uh, during the Vrindavan Leela, Krishna and Balaram enjoyed many transcendental pastimes, which are vividly described in the 10th canto of the Shima Bhagavata and also in the Krishna book. Uh, Garga Muni performed the name-giving ceremony for Krishna and Balaram, who spent their very early life enjoying playful childish activities, crawling and walking, stealing butter, and breaking lots and lots of pots. And children really enjoy doing that. Break the pots. During their pastimes, with the cowherd boys in the forest of Vrindavan, Balaram and Krishna killed numerous demons like Aga, Denukasura, Palambasura, and many of whom were sent by King Kamsa. Later, they traveled to Mathura, where they killed Kamsa's wrestlers, known as Chanur Mushtika. So, they were killed, big, powerful wrestlers. But young boys, they just killed them so easily. Afterward, they battled Jarasandha and jumped from a very high mountain that Jarasandha had set fire to. Balaram famously taught both Duryodhan and Bhima the art of fighting with the mace. So he was Bhima's guru and Duryodhan's guru in the mace. When war broke out between the Kauravas and the Pandavas, Balaram was equally affectionate to both parties and so decided to be neutral. Eventually, when Bhima of greater strength defeated Duryodhana of greater skill with the but with the mace, by dealing a blow below the navel with his mace, a move against the rules of mace combat, Balaram got so angry with Bhima that he threatened to kill him immediately. So Balaram became very, very angry that you've cheated. And you will be known, he said, as a cheating fighter, a crooked fighter, because that is not allowed. Because what happened, they were fighting, and of course, Duryodhana was a very dexterous, very, very fantastic mover. He was like a dancer. He could fight. Nobody could defeat Duryodhana with a mace. So they were smashing each other, smashing the body, smashing the heads. There was, obviously, there was a lot of blood and there were cuts. And, and they were fighting, but there was no winner here. So we know that uh, who gave uh, the clue to, uh, to Duryodhana? Krishna, and what did he do? What did he do? Did he say something? Or? Yes. He simply went and he reminded, oh yes, of course. Duryodhan, he covered himself. When he, when, he protect, when he prepared his body to be invincible, because Gandhari, his mother, wanted Duryodhana, not obviously his mother, whether he's a Hitler, Mussolini, it doesn't matter. 
He's my son. I don't want him to die. So she...